Ladies, gentlemen, good afternoon. This is author and philosopher Germinal Van. Today we're going to talk about a new topic, economic analysis. Of course, econ economic analysis deals with the method scholars use to determine economic theory. So, but before I dive into the core of economic analysis, uh, we are of course going to discuss a little bit about the definition of economics. We're going to talk about economics analysis and we're also going to talk about uh, the different school of thought and the branches of economics and everything else. So in one of my videos in the past, I said that I never took a class in economics in college and which is actually true I, I majored in political science in undergrad and grad school so i became interested in economics uh i would say about two years ago yes about two years ago when i actually transitioned from being a republican to a libertarian because libertarianism is a political philosophy that is actually divided in two specific branches. You have the economic branch and the political philosophy branch. So the political philosophy branch is, is the branch that deals with ethics and natural rights and, you know, the political thought of libertarianism. And then the economic branch is the free market. So what attracted me specifically to libertarianism was the economic branch of it, so the free market. So as you know, I'm a huge advocate of the free market. I will always be because I believe that the market is the best economic system wherein people can thrive in a free society. So the free market to me is the best system. But in within libertarianism, I learned a lot. I learned, for instance, about the Chicago school of economics i learned about the austrian school of economics and anarcho-capitalism you know all these various branch of uh of economics that are actually thriving the libertarian movement but what i want to talk to you guys about economic analysis but before we started we're going to now talk about economics what is economics so there are three definitions the first is the study of wealth or the science of wealth and that definition was um, established by adam smith who is known to be the father of modern economics is the, the author of the famous book the wealth of nations that i have up there and you also have jean baptiste who say that supply creates its own demand. Uh, he is also uh, one of the pioneers that uh, established that economics is the science or the study of wealth. So basically, when we say that economics is the study or the science of wealth, it means it deals principally with distribution, with... Um, uh, product with distribution production and to an extent consumption too everything that deals with capital how the accumulation of capital uh, increased wealth and etc so that period which says that economics is the science of wealth started from adam smith all the way to john stuart mill when john stuart mill wrote it, the famous book principles of political economy so uh, Adam Smith, Jean Baptiste, John Stuart Mill, uh, David Ricardo. All these economists uh, claim that economics is a science of wealth. And then the second definition of economics is, was made by Alfred Marshall, who was primarily trained as a physicist. He says that economics is basically the study of the business of life of the or of the ordinary business of life of people so basically alfred marshall says that economics basically is the study of the wealth of the people so it's interesting to understand because 
Alfred Marshall is, I could say, one of the initiator of micro economics because he deals with people. He doesn't necessarily deal with the aggregate, you know, from a macro level. He deals with people. How is it? Because, for instance, so the philosophy of um, Alfred Marshall is the following. Is it because, for instance, in a household, we say that, let's say a household has makes um, $85,000 a year. And that household has four people. But among these four people, there's only, I would say, one person who makes that amount. The three others don't work. So with Alfred Marshall, does it mean that because a household makes 85,000 a year therefore everybody is is doing well in that same household of course not so he's saying that economics deals with how every single individual is doing individually and then we have the third uh, definition of economics which is um the study of the science the study or the science my bad of uh, the allocation of scarce resources. And that definition was made by Lionel Robbins in the 1930s. He says that human beings have unlimited wants, but it's not enough to satisfy everybody. So it's how, so basically, since there is not enough to satisfy everybody, how are we allocating resources so that the most important wants are satisfied. So let's say food, water. Water, of course, is normally an unlimited good, but when you're in the desert, it becomes a scarce resources. What would you do for a pint of water if you were in the desert? So that's what Lionel Robbins says. He says that economics is the science of the allocation of scarce resources. And Today, economics is defined as the science of the allocation of scarce resources. So this is the definition that anyone who studies economics or who is interested in studying economics will find in the textbooks. Personally, I believe that economics is the science of wealth because economics is the science that enables you to understand how to create wealth. Of course, human beings are the ones that create wealth. Alfred Marshall, to an extent, his definition is valid because if people are not doing well, there's no wealth to be created. Of course, so you need human capital. But where I kind of disagree with Alfred Marshall, though, is that what is the most important is that for wealth to be created you need maybe not everybody but you need some people to actually do the work so that the wealth is created and others can actually now be they can contribute it to that wealth that was created and expand on that wealth so basically to me, I agree more with Adam Smith, uh, John Stuart Mill, David Ricardo on their approach to economics. But it does not mean that Alfred Marshall or Lionel Robbins are wrong at all. In fact, all three definitions go along. They all, uh, they all, uh, they all mingled. In fact, you can even put that in a pyramid. So. Economics start from, you know, the business, the ordinary business of life of, you know, of the, of people. Then how we're going to, to allocate resources. And it's based on how we allocate resources that we can create the wealth. So the, so the three definitions are all incorporate into economics. So now that has been established we're going to talk about economic analysis. That's where it's becoming interesting. So, 
many have uh they have noticed that economics now looks more like a hard science it looks more like a hard science because mathematics has been strongly and vigorously incorporated in the method of economic analysis when adam smith wrote the wealth of nations he did not use a single mathematical symbol to determine free market theory he did everything verbally john stuart mill did the same david ricardo did the same and then alfred marshall was actually the first to officially use mathematical models in economic theory and economic analysis so he used mathematical models to determine economic theory so basically he's the first to take economics to a rigorous mathematical level and then you also have william jivons who was one of the first to actually assert that anything that deals with quantity is necessarily mathematical he wrote a book called the general mathematical uh, theory of political economy it's a very it's a very powerful book where he also explain why economics it leans more toward the hard science and then in the 20th century economics started to shift toward the part of hard science people like uh paul samuelson start to use math as the main tool to determine economic theory now what is my personal uh what is my personal assessment of that in fact economics is a is a mixture of both i see economics fundamentally as a social science nonetheless i i believe that it is a hard science it is a hard science because math became a necessary tool to determine economic theory and to proceed to economic analysis you need mathematics now the, the problem is that to what extent math is necessary that's where the line has been drawn between proponents of mathematical uh, of mathematical economics and people who argue that economics is a social science of course economic principle is a social science because you deal with people and when you deal with people you cannot always plan how people will exactly behave or react to every single situation that's why we have markets because if everything could be planned accordingly we wouldn't need market we would just follow the computers of linear programs and we would determine what prices are and what the people want to eat or what the people want to consume and etc that's that is actually one of the reasons why the soviet union failed because they 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 alienated the market so economics is fundamentally a social science but as i say it is also a hard science because you need the math you need the math for instance to determine uh how a market operates if for instance uh you want to to calculate um supply if you want to determine supply and demand you need to create mathematical models for that so yes you need economics now you have people like Paul Samuelson who have taken economics to such a mathematical level that it becomes impossible to even understand the subject anymore that's a problem and that is why even in the nobel prize economics is the only social science that receive a prize in fact except for literature it's the only social science that receive a prize and that is considered as a hard science because of the mathematical level that has been implemented in in the discipline so ludwig von mises and friedrich hayek claim that especially the the austrian school of economics overall they do not rely on 
on math they believe that math is not a necessary tool to determine economic analysis they say that by understanding how people behave you can predict what would be their choice and etc the austrian school has a point nonetheless i believe to an extent it is their point is flooded it is flooded because to simply rely on logical the de on logical deduction is fallacious there are circumstances that empirical evidence and mathematical mo models are needed in order to determine what will be the next uh the next event especially when it comes to monetary policy when it comes to monetary policy so which is part of like fi financial economics you need mathematics in it and then of course there are other disciplines that you don't necessarily need uh the math development economics for instance which is the field in which i am in economics is a branch that you do not necessarily need the math but it is the math is still important to an extent so the way i work in economics is that i write my entire explanation in plain english then i summarize that explanation in mathematical language it is, a, it is important to understand that mathematics is simply a language it is a tool it's, it is a rhetorical tool that you use to simplify an explanation now the modern economists what they do is that they start their explanation by using math and that's where it confuses people because if you started using the math to explain a theory no one will understand is not everyone that has the ability to easily understand mathematics so my approach is that as i said you write in plain english then you explain then you summarize your explanation in mathematical language and it's done so basically my point is to reduce the use of math to the smallest scope possible that's how I believe that economic analysis should be done. But for everyone who is, in, who is interested in economics, I think that math is necessary. It is mandatory. If you do not like math, do not get into economics because mainstream economics is based on mathematics. It is substantially and significantly important to have at least the basis in math today thanks to technology we can learn math on youtube we can learn math online all you need is to take calculus and you start getting the the skills back again i major i major in in high school i majored in math physics and um, biology because in the french system in high school we have majors back in the days i used to hate math i used to strongly hate math because i didn't understand and it, it it really irritated me and then i started talking with one of my friends who are more on the austrian side but who do not dismiss the use of mathematics in economic analysis and that's when my taste for math came back and then i started to uh to get back on math and start started you know, studying calculus again by myself thank god to technology i can track back on it but it's it's really useful the the forthcoming books that i will be publishing on economics you guys will now see more math included in my analysis it is necessary before my books were more like political philosophy and Yes, there was some economic theory, but it was all verbal. From now on, most of my books will will be shifting toward a more mathematical approach. But I will still uh, make sure that the mathematical analysis is reduced instead of expanded. And when it comes now to my economic school of thought, of course, I support the free market. But 
I personally closer or I lean closer to the neoclassical uh, school of thought in in economics rather than the pure classical approach. And I also lean to the public choice theory. So for those who don't know public choice theory, so public choice is uh, is basically the use of economic tools in the study of political science. So it, public choice created the discipline of constitutional economics. So how to, for instance, interpret a constitution from an economic standpoint, which is really interesting and fascinating. I've been reading this book lately, The Economic, and politics of wealth redistribution by Gordon Tullock, great book, and I strongly advise those who love economics and political science together to read public choice theory. I start to develop myself some theories in public choice, and I and I combine my theories in macroeconomics and development economics because I'm more concerned with the economic growth of low income countries. So I think that using public choice theory as a tool in development economics will be a perfect uh, mixture to enhance the discipline of development economics, which is now gaining grounds with Abhijit Banerjee and, uh, and Esther Duflo, who, were both, uh, who both won the, the Nobel Prize in economics in 2019. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was my allocation of the day. I'm really passionate about economic analysis. And let me know what you think. DM me on, on, uh, on Instagram if you want to talk about economics. I'm open. But, yeah, I want to know what you guys think. If you think that economics is more social science than a hard science, or if you think it's both like I believe it is, yeah, just let me know in, in the comments.